Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at track defaults in Reaper. The default settings are just that, suggested settings to help you get started, but Reaper is all about customization and setting it up in a way that works best for you. Before we get started, be sure to click the subscribe button if you've not already done so, and also smash that notification bell so you can know anytime a new video is released. Also, some friends and I are on Discord now. Click the link in the description below to chat with me and other Reaper users in real time. Let's take a look at those track defaults. By default, when you create a new track in Reaper 6, the track height in the track control panel is set to medium height, it's automatically set for input channel 1, it's automatically record armed, and monitoring is also set by default. These track defaults work fine for most users, and the automatic monitoring was not something that was turned on in Reaper 5. It left a lot of new users scratching their heads wondering why they couldn't hear what they were trying to record. Let's take a look at Options, Preferences, and under the Project Settings go to Track Send Defaults. The first thing that we'll see is Track Volume Fader Default Gain, which is set to Unity or Zero. This can be changed to whatever number that you'd like, since record arm and monitoring are turned on by default, you may want to set this to something like negative infinity. What that will do is make sure that the fader is all the way down. That way if you have something plugged into your interface that's abnormally loud, it won't damage your hearing. Let's click apply and create a new track and see how that works. I'll double click a blank area in the track control panel to create a new track. And just as we've set, our volume fader is all the way down and we don't have to worry about any loud noises coming through the track before we're ready. Let's delete this track and take a look at some more settings. We'll go back to Options and Preferences, and in that same area, Track Send Defaults underneath the project header. You can choose to have certain envelopes visible as soon as you create a new track. There's also options for the default envelope point shape, and you can set that to whatever suits your needs. The default automation mode is Trim Read. I tend to leave that right where it is and change it as needed. I do like to change the default track height. I'll create a new track and make it as small as possible then change the default track height in new projects to use current. Now as the wording suggests, this will only affect new projects, so you won't see this take effect immediately. Other defaults that you can adjust are show and mixer. If we uncheck that and apply and create a new track, we can see that the new track is in the track control panel, but it does not show in the mixer. If you wanted to see that show up in the mixer, you can go to view, track manager, and then place a tick mark under MCP, which is mix control panel. I prefer to have them show up in the mixer by default, so I'll put that setting back where it was, hit apply, and close my track manager. Next is main parent send. If this item is not checked, the tracks will not send to the master track by default. I'm not sure why you would want that unchecked, but you can set it whichever way you like. Free item positioning allows you to rearrange media items on a track in whatever way you'd like. You can have overlapping items and have more than one item playing at the same time on the same track. Admittedly, it's not something that I've ever found a use case for, but if it's something that you'd like to do, the option is there for you. Record arm is enabled by default. I prefer to turn this off. Let's hit apply and create another track. And now my new track is not record armed. I think I'd also like my fader volume to be set back to unity, so we'll go back to that field and place a zero and hit apply. Once I create the new track, my fader is right where I like it. Let's delete these tracks and check out a few more options. The next option is Record Config, which by default is set to Input 1. Clicking Input 1 brings up another dialog that presents more options. Here is where we find Monitor Input turned on by default. I can click that to disable the function, hit Apply, create a new track, and we can see that monitoring is not enabled. This means that if I arm this track, if I want to hear what's going through the track as I'm playing, I need to click this to turn on Record Monitoring. I prefer to have record monitoring turned off by default. That way if I'm recording a live amp or live drums, I don't have any additional noise unless I want it. Let's go back to that dialog and take a look at the remaining options. You can change the default for your recording to MIDI, Output, Force Format Input, or you can disable recording altogether and make a track monitoring only. Each of these options can be set on a track individually, but you can always set the default here. I prefer to leave mine on Input, Audio, or MIDI. The next section is specific to the track inputs. The default is Mono Input 1. I've currently got my audio interface disabled since I'm recording this through OBS and I don't want my audio bleeding back into Reaper. But on yours, you should see the inputs of your audio interface and you can choose whichever input that you'd like as your default. If you'd like for it to be stereo, you can choose stereo and choose the pair that you'd like. There's also options for multi-channel, for MIDI, or for none. There's also an option to automatically record arm when a track is selected. So to go back through the defaults that I prefer, I like for the default fader volume to be at Unity. I don't have any envelope set to show up by default. Linear is fine for the envelope point shape. 
Trim read mode is fine for automation mode. I like to have my track height set to the smallest possible. I do not have record arm selected, and I also prefer not to have monitor input turned on by default. But again, that's the beauty of Reaper is you can set this up to work in any way that you'd like. We'll explore more default settings and how to change them in later episodes. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee link below. This is normally the part where I say I like coffee, but I haven't made any this evening. I still like coffee. Just don't have any right now. I mean, there's nobody else at home, so it would be pointless to make an entire pot of coffee just to make a video. I guess I could get a cup and fake it. Might be obvious. Oh well.